following is a presentation of TBS Sports. Home of the 1990 Goodwill Games. Jackie Joyner Kersey, double gold medalist at the 88 Olympics in Seoul. Now she readies for the 400 meter hurdles, an event she first ran seriously in 1985. Hi, everybody. I'm Ron Thula with Craig Masbach, live from San Jose for Bruce Jenner's Bud Light Classic. This is a treat, Ron, to see her in any event. Of course, her main event's the long jump and the women's heptathlon. She is the favorite. Jackie Joyner Kersey in lane four. Kathy Freeman in lane three. Victoria Fulcher in five and Arnita Epps in lane six. And it is Kathy Freeman taking the early lead. Well, Jackie's usually the favorite in any event she goes into, but she's relatively inexperienced in this event. Worked on her hurdles indoors, but she's having real troubles with her steps right now. Now Jackie Joyner Kersey is beginning to make up the gap. She is in lane four. Two-time gold medal winner in the 1988 Olympics. She's just, she's just having trouble running at every hurdle, chopping her steps. She's got tremendous strength, which has got to help her towards the end of this race. But it's a windy day, and it makes it hard for the hurdlers to count their steps and hit their steps properly. As we come down the stretch, it is Jackie joyner Kersey, an event she says she wants to conquer, the 400-meter hurdles. And right now it is Kersey, Victoria Fulcher in second, with Jack Kathy Freeman in third, and it will be Jackie joyner Kersey winning the 400-meter hurdles. Victoria Fulcher is second. Kathy Freeman is third. Somewhere around 57 seconds. Not the kind of performance that you're used to seeing from Jackie Joyner Kersey. World record in this event, 52.94. And her husband and coach, Bobby Kersey, has predicted that she would break the world record in this event this year. Obviously has quite a lot of work to do. And it's been a tough year training-wise for Jackie Joyner Kersey. All the public appearances and things she's been making around the country does a lot of her training in airports. And early on, we could see the pattern established. She was just having trouble hitting her steps right. Here's an example of that, stutter stepping all the way up to the hurdle. She didn't hit any hurdles. Uh, I've heard it said in the past that Jackie Joyner Kersey sometimes runs hurdles the way Mike Tyson drives a car. <laughs> and that's why they worked on the hurdles indoors, and she was very successful indoors. She's making her season debut, and it is a successful one. Jackie Joyner Kersey wins the women's 400 meter hurdles. We will have more exciting track and field competition next on U.S. Olympic Gold. The Bruce Jenner Bud Light Classic, live from San Jose City College in San Jose, California. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ron Thulin. Welcome you to more track and field coverage right here on U.S. Olympic Gold. Now, today's meet is part of the Mobile Grand Prix circuit. That circuit consists of 17 meets covering 14 countries. Now, the athletes compete for points, and those accumulating the most points will be in the Mobile Grand Prix Finals. That will be in September in Monte Carlo, and you can see that right here on U.S. Olympic Gold. The total purse for the victors, over three quarters of a million dollars. The weather today in San Jose is beautiful. It is 70 degrees, humidity at 50%. Winds are out of the north at 12 miles an hour, and it is a gusty day under partly cloudy skies. Once again, my broadcast partner this afternoon, Craig Masbach. Craig, first of all, talk about today's field. Well, the field is strong from top to bottom. We've already seen a great female athlete, Jackie joyner Kersey. We'll see more, including Anna Key Road of Cuba. Last year, she was ranked number one in the world in 800 meters. She faces a top American field. Another American athlete, Dawn Sowell. She's young. She's a sprinter from LSU. Many people say she could be the next Florence Griffith Joyner. She'll be in the 100. Well, the third member of our broadcast crew is Dwight Stones, and he is on the field. Dwight? Well, guys, the action on the field could be as hot as on the track. We have the Olympic silver and bronze medalists in the men's long jump in Mike Powell and Larry Myricks. Myricks, a man who is jumping so technically well right now that many people feel he may end up being the person to finally break Bob Beeman's 20-year-old long jump world record. In the shot put world indoor record holder and Olympic silver medalist Randy Barnes says he's starting to round into shape. He expects some big things this year after a very, very successful indoor campaign last winter. 
Our first event of the afternoon was affected by the win. Jackie Joyner Kersey, however, wins the women's 400 meters in a time of 57-15, followed by Fulter and Kathy Freeman. Dwight Stones is with Jackie Joyner Kersey now. Dwight. Well, Jackie, now you've finally done it. A very windy day. You had a lot of trouble with those hurdles. Yes, I did. Uh, the first hurdle, I took it with my dominant leg and two through seven. It was with my non-dominant, and I knew I was having problems. What are you going to have to do to, to really attack this race so that you can run your steps and do the technique the way you know you have to do it to run fast? I think mentally I'm going to have to get tough and really uh, grasp what Bobby's trying to tell me to do. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll look for that later in the season. Stay tuned, folks, for more Olympic gold. U.S. Olympic gold, a TBS sports exclusive, is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Dodge cars and trucks on the street or off the road, it's the new spirit of Dodge. And by Diet Coke, just for the taste of it, the move is on to Diet Coke. Florence Griffith Joyner holds the world and American records in our next event, the women's 100 meters, in a time of 10.49. Did it back in 1988. Our field for the women's 100 this afternoon. The lane we will be keeping our eye on, lane five, Dawn Sowell, one of the favorites this afternoon. Many people call her on the future, Flojo. Great indoors with a big upset win over Gwen Torrance, breaking a long sprinting streak. And she's got the fastest time in the world outdoors. Here she is, 10.93. Also a collegiate record for that event. She's already set outdoors, runs for LSU. She was a triple winner just two weeks ago in the SEC championships, a double winner in individual competition in both the 100 and 200. You talk about the collegiate record, that was set at the Texas Relays, and she has been very successful so far this year. Right alongside her, though, Grace Jackson. What a great veteran. Second to Florence Griffith Joyner in the 200 meters in Seoul. Eventually, many people think she'll move up to the 400 meters. Long, tall sprinter. Some people say she looks like a cross between Grace Jackson and Spider-Man. <laughs> well, she finished fourth in the Olympic 100 meters. Went to Alabama A&M, 27 years old. And we have a little jumping at the starting line, so we're going to have to reset it all again. Once again, Don Sowell, personal record of 10.9 in this event, the 20-year-old LSU. We see everybody jumping right in the middle of the pack. It looked like lane five, Don Sowell. It seemed like she just wasn't ready. Seemed a little nervous at the start. This is a tough race for her. She's been running against collegiate runners most of the outdoor season. Also in lane three, she's got Danette Young, who's on the Olympic team, won a gold medal in the four by 100 meters. At the dawning of a new age, Don Sowell, Many people are looking for her to go to the NCAA championships next weekend and win three events. Right now, the task at hand is the women's 100 meters in San Jose. And Sowell is in lane five. That is the one we'll be keeping our eye on along with Grace Jackson. And it is Sowell. Sowell in lane five, but in lane seven, Jennifer Innes making a run. But it is Dawn Sowell with Jennifer Innes. Esther Jones finishing second. 10.88 the unofficial time, but as expected, if that is indeed 1088, that would be a new personal record for Dawn. Well, the wind's been blowing very strongly all day, as much as 9, 10 miles an hour, so the times may not mean much in the sprints. But as we see so well on the left of your screen, she didn't come out all that well. She was a little bit behind Tina Hegawam of Nigeria early on. But she really came on strongly at the end. I talked with her coach, Lawrence Seagrave. He says her technique is really coming around. She's getting sharp and is going to be ready for those NCAA championships next weekend. Don Sowell, the, women, the women's 100-meter winner this afternoon. We'll be back at the Bruce Jenner's Bud Light Classic live on U.S. Olympic Gold in a moment. I think you'll like this house. Uh, isn't this supposed to be haunted? Haunted? What an absurd idea. <laughs> I mean, what would a ghost be doing here? <laughs> haunted. David. No other diet soft drink delivers the real cola taste of one calorie diet Coke, the real one. It's lifting more and more spirits every day. Just for the taste of it. Oops. The move is on to Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Classic, and when you mention that distance, the name of Steve Scott comes to mind. 33 year old Steve Scott. And he is being introduced now wearing the sunglasses. and. Tell you what, he is going to be the favorite as we look at the world and American record. Saida Wida 
holds the world record set in West Germany back in 1985. The American record, Sydney Marie, also in 1985 in West Germany. But Steve Scott might be the man today, although he will be challenged by young Jeff Atkinson just two weeks ago. You might remember as we look at the field that Jesse Owens, that Jeff Atkinson had to pull out because of an Achilles injury. Says so his uh, ankle, actually his Achilles tendon is feeling better. There's, we see, we see Steve Scott. Actually doesn't need those glasses today as it's become cloudy here, a bit cold. When I spoke with him last night, he said he expected it to be windy today. It wouldn't be a fast race unless some of the college guys took it out. The weather's been tough, and we see Bob Kennedy, one of the college guys that's under pressure here. He needs a qualifying time for the NCAA championships. He's going to have to push it if he's going to get that qualifying time. That is another aspect of this meet, along with trying to accumulate Grand Prix points in individual uh, competition. Some members here today are trying to also qualify for the NCAAs, which will be held next week. Bob Kennedy, the 18-year-old from Indiana, won the NCAA Cross Country Championships last fall. A force to be reckoned with in the future. But right now, our eyes will be on Steve Scott. He's well back in the pack. Steve is moving up to the 5,000 meter th meters this year. He's the guy who's really owned the mile or 1500 meters event in the United States over the last few years. Fifth in the Olympics last year in the metric mile. But he says his time is over in that event. He's going to run the 5000 meters in all future championships. But he's already won a big 1500 this year in Tokyo just a couple of weeks ago. Well, Rod Brower is our first rabbit. Gary Lewis second. They are running one two right now. And we will keep our eyes on Atkinson. We have talked about Atkinson that he likes to hold back a little bit. For the last 30% of the race, he'll kick it in. Well, he wants to be in good position in that last lap. That's when he makes his move. The guy in fourth is Bob Kennedy. He's the one who's looking for a qualifying time in this event for the NCAA championships. And don't downplay that story that you told about winning cross-country nationals as a freshman. Last guy to do that was a guy by the name of Henry Rono. He went on less than two years later to set four world records. And it was 59.8 seconds at 400 meters. Now that's for the rabbit, who's already about seven, eight yards up on the rest of the field. So it's a slow pace as we would expect with a windy day. Alessandro Lambruschini from Italy, a 24-year-old who placed fourth last year in the Olympic steeplechase is currently running third. Bob Kennedy still running fourth. Scott well back in the pack, as is Jeff Atkinson. In fact, Atkinson just over the left shoulder of Steve Scott. Charles Cherudat is also running third right now, has moved into third place. He ran in the Olympics uh, as, as far back as 1984 when he was only 19. He got fifth in the 5,000 meters, but he's also a pretty good miler. He's run 338 for this metric mile, the 1,500 meters, which is about 120 yards short of the mile distance. Speaking of Charles from Kenya, he is on the outside. Uh, he uh, has a twin brother, quite successful also. Well, Kip, was actually, I was actually there back in 1983. Charles set the world junior record for 5,000 meters. His brother Kip set the world record for the 1,500 meters for juniors uh, on the same night. It was in Munich, 1983. Well, Charles is currently running in second place, and Alessandro Lambruschini of Italy has taken over the early lead. And Look over on the left, there's Jeff Atkinson starting to move up right behind Steve Scott. These guys know that it's going to come down to this last lap as it's just about one lap to go. It's turning into a sprint race just about now. What about the time, Craig, so far? Are you surprised at the split times and that everybody is still pretty much in a pack as we hit the last lap? Well, because it's slow, and keep your eyes on second, and Tim Hacker, he's a very good finish, and you can be sure that Scott wants to be with him as they have just 300 meters to go. Well, Tim Hacker, the 26-year-old from Wisconsin, he is trying to make his move. Steve Scott also keeping an eye on the leader, Alessandro Lambruschini from Italy. And Steve Scott now trying to come up into second place, which he does. Jeff Atkinson running fourth. Atkinson may be bothered by that Achilles, but it is indeed Steve Scott, the 33-year-old, a UC Irvine graduate back in 78. Well, you know, in the Olympic trials last year, it was Atkinson who had a lead on Scott coming into the home stretch. Scott was never able to catch him. This time it was Scott that got the big jump, and they're trying to, they're fighting to try to catch up to him now. Steve Scott running smoothly. Atkinson will finish second. Tim Hacker comes in third. So Steve Scott at 33 years old, moving up in distance has won the men's 1500 meters unofficially a time of 339.3. And Bob Kennedy was too far back. It doesn't look like he would have gotten that, that qualifying time for the NCAAs. A great victory for Steve Scott. 
Here's and he used all of his racing savvy and intelligence. It was Lamborghini who, who now is more of a mm -hmm. steeplechaser, used to run the 1500 meters, who tried to get the jump on that last lap. Hacker went with him. Hacker still coming back from injury troubles over the last couple of years. Scott made such an authoritative move with 200 meters to go that he really caught Atkinson by surprise. And I think you're right, Ron. I think Atkinson was doubting himself a little mm -hmm. bit because of that injury he's had. Look how far outside Atkinson had to go. And he came back on Scott, but Scott simply was gone. There was no catching him on this day. And it's great for Steve Scott's confidence to know that he can come out on a day like this, run a 339-1500. He knows he's going to be looking good when he runs the 5,000 meters later in the year. Well, he has won six tack crowns in the 1500. And this afternoon, he adds the 1500 meter crown at the Bruce Jenner Bud Light Classic. We have a great deal more coming up for you this afternoon, live from San Jose, California. Up next will be the men's 400 meters. Stay with us as U.S. Olympic gold continues live from California. Next time, Olympic gold medalist Carl Lewis for the 1990 Goodwill Games. The Goodwill Games, what it means to me is that uh, it's, it's an opportunity to have a great competition. The 1990 Goodwill Games, uniting the world's best in a winning tradition. Everywhere you look, people are reaching for the real cola taste of Diet Coke. The real one. Just for the taste of it. The move is on to Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Official results of the women's 100 meters. Don Sowell in a wind-aided time of 10.93. Esther Jones finishes second. Tina Iheaguam winds up third. And in the 1500 meters, which we just saw, it was Steve Scott in a time of 339.33. Atkinson was second, and Hacker was third. As Craig Masbach mentioned earlier, there are members of the Cuban national team. In fact, they have missed the last two Olympics, but they are competing here this afternoon. Craig takes a look. Ever since Enrique Figueroa won Cuba's first Olympic track and field medal at the 1964 Olympics, success in Olympic sports has been an important goal of Fidel Castro's state. Castro's Olympic plans began to bear fruit when boxer Teofilo Stevenson won the first of his three gold medals in 1972. In 76, Alberto Huantarena won two golds in track and field. The government supplied the school and the mass sport and gave the opportunity to participate of the all Cuban citizens, giving to the sportsmen all things that they need to practice sport, everything that the sport needs to participate and to become, for example, for instance, in me personally, an Olympic champions. That's the reason that the Cuban have very good sport and international sport competitions. But it was the same system that in both 1984 and 1988 denied the Olympic opportunity to athletes who had a legitimate shot at gold. A new generation of Cuban stars like current high jump world record holder Javier Sotomayor and sprinter middle distance runner Anna Quirot. Quirot, who was ranked number one in the world at 800 meters last year, dominated her rivals. Here, beating Olympic medalist Diane Dixon and Grace Jackson Anna at Quirot 400 now meters. Has taken the lead. Grace Jackson is running third. The winner is Anna Quirot of Cuba. There was no Olympic gold for Anna, but she fully supports the party line on the Seoul boycott. The reaction wasn't only mine, but the same for all Cubans. It was not our decision, but the decision of the state. We supported the decision not to participate in Seoul. It was to show our country's solidarity with North Korea. Cuban athletes accept the role of politics in sports because of the financial support the government gives them. But veterans like discus thrower Luis Deliz appreciate the value of sport as a vehicle for international friendship. Even during competition, the athletes shake hands, they hug and kiss, they have respect for each other. We should continue to develop that type of relationship, a friendliness between athletes of all nations. While the goal of every athlete is to triumph, American and Cuban athletes come from very different systems, each of which has its own merits. I'm not here to criticize anyone's ideas, and I hope it's vice versa for you, that you won't criticize our ideologies. 
And TBS Sports are, is pleased to announce that in 1991, the summer of, that we will be returning to Cuba for the 1991 Pan American Games at TBS Sports Exclusive. Exclusive. And speaking of the Cubans, there is Roberto Hernandez. Only 22 years old, certainly would have been a factor in Seoul if Cuba had gone to the Olympic Games, still learning this very tough event, the 400 meters. As we look at the field, the field is uh, fairly strong. We have a couple of names, the world and American records. Butch Reynolds, 43-29. We'll be seeing Butch later on, hopefully. Did it in Zurich, Switzerland in 1988. The field, the challenge from Roberto Hernandez may come from Andrew Valman. He will be in lane six. Valman won a gold medal, medal in Seoul. He ran on the four by 400 meter relay in the early rounds. Was not on the team that tied the world record in the final. Dwight Stones, I know, had an opinion on that one. His view, of course, as uh, we look at Andrew Valman, was that if they put Valman on that relay, if the Olympic coaches had put Valman on the 4x4, four four, they would have broken that, re that record that has stood since 1968. They tied it instead. Andrew Valman in lane six, Roberto Hernandez in four. We're going to have to do it all over again in the men's 400 meters. We might also want to mention Mark Rowe, who will be running in lane three. He seems to enjoy U.S. Olympic cold. He's had some success, success at both Mount Sac and Jesse Owens. I walked into the hotel. I saw him there. I said, well, I knew it wouldn't be an Olympic gold show unless uh, you were in the field. <laughs> Hernandez was the one to jump in lane four. You know, sometimes when you go to another country, the commands, the starting commands are different in each country, of course, according to the language. Hernandez has run in this country before the 1987 Pan American Games in Indianapolis. He was part of a thrilling stretch battle in the 4x400 four relay. The U.S. normally owns that event. Cuba came out and ran like that was the only thing that mattered to them. Coming down the home stretch, Hernandez just couldn't hold on, and Roddy Haley from the U.S. out leaned him at the tape. The very thrilling victory for the United States there. Hernandez in red, white, and blue fighting the win this afternoon also. Ran his current personal record in an early season duel of 44-22, and it is a clean start. Hernandez Cubans, in lane four. Cubans often get ready early. They have the warmer weather there. And a lot of times they're good early season performances from guys like Hernandez. And Hernandez, a very smooth, striding young man. Mark Rowe, however, of the United States in lane three has taken the early lead. Rowe, the 28-year-old from Jackson State. Again, we can mention again, we saw Rowe anchor the U.S. team to a world record in the 4 by 400 meters indoors but look at Hernandez come back on him and here comes Hernandez as we come in the home stretch of the men's 400 meters it is Hernandez with Rowe Hernandez with Rowe and Antonio Pettigrew also in the field it is Mark Rowe with Pettigrew and Hernandez can Mark Rowe hold on yes with Pettigrew second and Roberto Hernandez finishes third in an unofficial time 44 11 for Mark Rowe 45 11 for Mark Rowe he indeed likes the cameras of TBS. It looked like he could have run another 400 meters. He's very happy with this victory. Mark Rowe won the national championships on this track a few years back. And he's just a great veteran, 28 years old. And you can see here, it looked as if Hernandez made a good burst on him off the turn, but just tremendous strength from Mark Rowe. 400 meters through history is full of great nicknames for runners. El Caballo, the horse, Alberto Wantarena, the mighty burner, was the great uh, Larry James from the United States. I think we need a nickname for Mark Rowe. We'll work on that for the next show. We will have to, but right now, Mark Rowe's nickname is winner. He wins the men's 400. We'll be back to San Jose on U.S. Olympic gold in a moment. is the time for Mark Rowe in the men's 400 meters. He wins it with Antonio Pettigrew second, Roberto Hernandez third. And this track meet is named after Bruce Jenner, the winner of the 1976 decathlete, and he is with Dwight Stone. Thanks, Ron. Bruce, would you think 10 years ago that this meet was going to have grown into the, the huge attraction that it has finally become? Well, I'm sort of amazed how it has grown over the years. You know, we started this really as a, a local meet um, that uh, Bert Bonanno put on, because this is the track where I trained, lived right over here on the side, and you know, for the last four years of my ca uh, career, I trained here. But it's not only this meet here. We also have a high school division. We also have the college and open division. It's three weekends long. So it has grown into this massive meet. 
And it's been a lot of fun to see it grow, uh, grow throughout the years. Uh, it's been boy, about 11 years now. In fact, when this meet started, I want to show you how long this meet has been around. When this meet started, these kids were not even around. These are my four kids. First, we got number one here. This is Burt Jenner. OK, he's, uh, what are you, 10 years old? OK, next is Cassie Jenner. Cassie, this is my next in line, my only girl. I love it. And then we have Brandon come right in here, sneak right in in front. We have Brandon. And last but not least, Brody Jenner, the character of the group. Yes, he's in here. But when we started this meet, these kids weren't even around. And uh, it's amazing to see not only my kids grow, but this track meet grow. And it is indeed grown to one of the best, the Bruce Jenner's Bud Light Classic. Men's 200 meters is up next, the world record. Set back in 1979, the American record, of course, held by Carl Lewis, set back in 1983 in Indianapolis, along with Joe Deloge, who tied that record of 19.75 back in 1988. The men's 200 meters, we have a name we have become familiar with here on U.S. Olympic Gold, Harvey Glass in lane three, but lane four, Larry Myricks is a name that uh, is more synonymous, I think, with long jumping for most people. But Larry likes the 200 meters and has aspirations to be an Olympic medalist in this event also. Larry Myrick successful today in the long jump. This may be the two oldest lanes, three and four, this track, afternoon. Right Glance at 32. Larry Myrick's at 33. Started his intention to do more sprinting this year. He said uh, that that's what he wants to accomplish in the outdoor season. He's doing it this afternoon by running the 200. How does this help him? Does this help him in the long jump? Or why would somebody of Larry Myrick's caliber decide to do more spring eventually. Well, certainly he wants to be fast on the runway. That's an important aspect to, to long jumping is speed. But I look at it the other way around. Long jumpers, hurdlers, those guys have to do more stretching, more technique work that helps them in their sprinting. A lot of times by working out for other events, it helps them become better sprinters. He also has the distinction of being the last person to beat Carl Lewis in the long jump. He did that back in 1981. Ran his personal breast of 20.03 at the 1983 TAC Championships. Uh, finished second behind. Who else? Carl Lewis. Carl Lewis setting that record of 19.75. I like Dwight's comment earlier, though. Uh, a lot the way Larry Myricks is jumping this year, he may be the one to break that 21-year-old record of Bob Beeman. Dwight Stones is on the field. Dwight, it is very windy in our tower. What is it like on the track? It's it's just as bad, if not worse, down here on the track. Plus, it's starting to be cold. These athletes who have to sit around or stand around waiting for their events to be called and, and want to warm up and do strides are going to be getting tight, going to be getting cold. And that it's a very significant factor because this is obviously a very important meet. There are Grand Prix points that are on the line. People like Butcher Reynolds, Larry Myricks, uh, Harvey Glantz are running at distances or doing events that are, they're not necessarily familiar with. So any break in the routine, anything that would make them think so about something other than their event completely is going to be very, very tough for them to deal with. I notice you have put on a jacket. <laughs> and we have had ours on for about two hours as we're up about 30 feet above the track here in San Jose. We are set for the men's 200 meters. Keep your eye on lane five. We've seen Myricks, and there he is. Butch Reynolds is in this field. We saw him win an exciting 200 meters. Not that fast, but an exciting 200 meters from Columbus a couple of weeks ago. It was cold and rainy in Columbus. Butch Reynolds ran a 20.52 with the Jesse Owens. And Reynolds is out well here, as is Harvey Glantz on the inside. His first turn is so important for Butch Reynolds. Let's see how he does as we come into the home stretch of the men's 200 meters. It is a close race. And it is Henry Thomas in lane two. This could be an upset. Henry Thomas, does he hold on? Yes! Henry Thomas in lane five. Butch Reynolds finished second. Lucius Miller third, but Henry Thomas, the 21-year-old UCLA student, a finalist in last year's Olympic trials, wins the men's 200 meters. Craig, that is our surprise this afternoon. Well, it's a surprise, and it's not a surprise. When I looked at this field earlier in the day, I said, this is this is track and field's amateur hour. You have Reynolds, who's a 400-meter runner, Myricks, who's a long jumper, Harvey Glantz, who hasn't run the 200 seriously for many years. And look in lane two, the guy who used to be in the middle of the track in the good lanes for 200-meter runs, Henry Thomas, the big star from Hawthorne, California. I spoke to him earlier today. He said he went out for the football team at UCLA, gained a lot of weight, didn't have success there, and he's just now coming back to track and field. I think it was a big surprise for Butch Reynolds to look over inside of him and see Henry Thomas running so well. Well, he is currently redshirting, but right now, Henry Thomas wins the men's 200 meters. We'll return to Bruce Jenner's Bud Light Classic live from San Jose in a moment. Officially, Henry Thomas wins the men's 200s, 20.42. Butch Reynolds is second. Lucius Miller third. And Dwight Stones is with the winner. 
Thanks, Ron. Henry, you know, a lot of people would think that this is an upset, but you've been an excellent 200-meter runner. You've gotten rather large this year from what I remember you last year, but you're very, very strong. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, Butch is a quality uh, athlete, 400-meter runner, 200-meter runner. Uh, I just basically been laying low all year. Uh, what happened was I gained a weight playing football this fall. Uh, went up to about 190 pounds. Decided not to play and train. Uh, this is my third race uh, this year. And I've just been uh, working out, trying to lose the weight and uh, run. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, pleased with my results today. Like I said, uh, Butch is a quality athlete. And so was the rest of Phil. OK, this is the event you want to run, 200 meters? Uh, I'm going to put more of a focus on the 200 meters this year. Uh, I plan to go up up to 400 meters uh, later this summer and, and stay there for a round, run, run some good 400s, hundreds, and concentrate in the middle this year. That's the plan. All right, good luck to you. Nice okay. performance. Back Thank to you, Ron. You. I'm sure Terry Donahue would love to have Henry Thomas back in uniform. We're ready for the women's 800 meters, the world record. 153.28, the American record. Mary Slaney, back August 16th, 1985, in a time of 156.9. We are set. And as I said earlier, it's a good American field. Keep your eye on Julie Jenkins and Carol Davidson. Debbie Marshall was fourth in the Olympic trials and Diana Richburg on the U.S. Olympic team back in 1984. But there's Anna Kirode. I mentioned that world record when we spoke with her coach and with Anna yesterday they said that's her goal in the next couple of years she'd like to be the world record holder in this event. She is undefeated in 13 races top ranked 800 meter runner in the world last year. On your mark. I asked her which event she preferred the 400 meters where she's world class or the 800 meters where she was number one in the world last year. She said the 800 not surprisingly most people don't care for that 400 too much and we see her in the pink top going out quickly that's her trademark she likes to take the lead and oftentimes when people move up from the 400 to the 800 that's the way they run. Well, she drops back into second place now is Marcia Tate from Jamaica currently running number one. Marcia Tate, the 27-year-old, was a Husker from Nebraska. Went there up until 1985, was a member of Jamaica. We're also going to talk about chicken and the other white meat pork. Exactly. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hi, how are you? All right, so we're starting off. You've got, some, you've got pork and chicken here.